In 1997, a mysterious phone call to a late-night radio show captivated listeners with an incredible tale. I, as usual, I brought the dogs with me. They wouldn't go anywhere near the damn thing. Mel Waters, a seemingly ordinary man, claimed to have discovered a bottomless pit on his property near Manistash, Washington. Little did anyone know, this enigmatic hole would become one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of our time. Mel Waters' story began when he purchased a plot of land in the remote wilderness of Washington State. The property had been owned by an elderly couple for over 30 years before Mel acquired it. Unbeknownst to him, the land held a bizarre secret that would soon capture the attention of people around the world. One day while exploring his new property, Mel stumbled upon a strange circular opening in the ground. The hole was roughly nine feet in diameter and had a stone retaining wall that extended about 15 feet below the surface. Curious, Mel attempted to probe the depth of the hole using various methods, but he was unable to find the bottom. As Mel investigated further, he noticed several peculiar characteristics of the hole. Despite dropping various objects into the pit, including a 2,500-foot fishing line weighted with a roll of Lifesaver's candy, no sound of impact was ever heard. The hole seemed to swallow everything without a trace, leaving only an eerie silence. Intrigued by this mystery, Mel began to conduct more experiments. He lowered a 2,500-foot fishing line with a one-pound lead weight attached, hoping to reach the bottom. To his astonishment, the weight never hit anything solid. Mel even claimed to have used a total of 80,000 feet of fishing line, over 15 miles, without ever touching the bottom. Adding to the hole's enigmatic nature was the unusual behavior of animals around it. Mel noticed that his loyal dogs refused to approach the pit, displaying uncharacteristic fear and resistance when brought near it. This aversion extended to all animals in the area, with neighbors reporting similar experiences with their pets. As word of Mel's discovery spread, the hole gained a reputation among locals as a place to dispose of unwanted items. Neighbors would frequently toss their trash into the seemingly bottomless pit, yet it never appeared to fill up. Some even claimed to have disposed of deceased pets in the hole, only to later spot the same animals running through the woods. Mel's story quickly caught the attention of Art Bell, the host of the popular late-night radio show Coast to Coast AM. In 1997, Mel appeared on the show to share his incredible tale with a captivated audience. Listeners were enthralled by the mysterious hole and its apparent defiance of conventional physics. As Mel's story circulated, it sparked a wave of public fascination and speculation. People from all walks of life began to offer theories about the hole's origin and purpose. Some suggested it might be a portal to another dimension or a gateway to the underworld. Others speculated that it could be the result of an ancient civilization's advanced technology or even a secret government experiment. Mel Waters' Coast to Coast AM Interviews Mel Waters' appearance on the popular late-night radio show Coast to Coast AM in 1997 marked a turning point in the legend of Mel's Hole. Hosted by the charismatic Art Bell, the show was known for its exploration of paranormal and unexplained phenomena. Mel's interview captivated listeners and ignited a firestorm of speculation and curiosity. During the first interview, Mel recounted the discovery of the mysterious hole on his property and the initial experiments he conducted to determine its depth. He described lowering a 1,500-foot fishing line weighted with a roll of Lifesaver's candy only to find that it never reached the bottom. Mel also shared his astonishment when he used a staggering 80,000 feet of fishing line over 15 miles without ever touching solid ground. Mel's vivid descriptions of the hole's peculiarities, such as the absence of sound when objects were dropped into it, and the unusual behavior of animals around it, painted a picture of an enigma that defied conventional explanation. His accounts of neighbors disposing of trash and even deceased pets in the hole, only to find no accumulation of debris or signs of the animals later, added to the growing intrigue. As Mel's story unfolded, Art Bell's listeners were captivated. The phone lines lit up with callers eager to offer their own theories and speculations about the nature of the hole. Some suggested that it could be a portal to another dimension or a gateway to a subterranean world. Others proposed that it might be the result of a secret government experiment or the handiwork of an ancient advanced civilization. Amidst the flurry of theories, some callers offered more pragmatic explanations. 
They questioned whether the fishing line might have simply reached the bottom without Mel realizing it, or if the weight of the line itself was causing it to stretch and appear endless. However, Mel's conviction and the sheer depth he claimed to have reached made it difficult to dismiss his account entirely. The reactions from listeners were a testament to the power of Mel's story. It struck a chord with people's innate curiosity and fascination with the unknown. The idea of a bottomless pit that defied the laws of physics and nature was both terrifying and alluring. It challenged our understanding of the world and hinted at the possibility of something extraordinary lurking beneath the surface. Mel's initial interview on Coast to Coast AM was just the beginning. In subsequent appearances on the show, he shared even more bizarre details about the hole and its surrounding area. Mel claimed that the hole emitted a strange warmth, distinct from the ambient temperature. He also mentioned reports of a mysterious black beam of light that occasionally shot up from the hole into the sky, witnessed by locals and truck drivers passing through the area. These additional details only served to deepen the mystery and fuel further speculation. Listeners began to draw connections between Mel's hole and other unexplained phenomena, such as UFO sightings and ancient legends of portals to other realms. The idea that the hole could be a gateway to something beyond our understanding captivated the imagination of many. The Second Hole in Nevada Just when the mystery of Mel's Hole seemed to be confined to the remote wilderness of Washington State, a new development emerged that would further deepen the intrigue surrounding this enigmatic phenomenon. In a twist of fate, Mel Waters' story reached the ears of a group of Native Americans living on a reservation in Nevada. Intrigued by Mel's account and his knowledge of unusual geological features, they reached out to him, inviting him to visit their land. Mel, driven by his insatiable curiosity and the prospect of uncovering more pieces to the puzzle, accepted their invitation. In September 2001, he traveled to Neved to meet with the Native American tribe. Little did he know that this trip would lead him to the discovery of a second hole, eerily similar to the one on his property in Washington. Upon arriving at the reservation, Mel was greeted by the Native Americans who had a deep understanding of the land and its secrets. They shared with him their own stories of strange occurrences and unexplained phenomena that had been passed down through generations. As they spoke, Mel realized that the mystery of the holes was not limited to his own experience. The Native Americans guided Mel to a remote location on their land, where they revealed the existence of another hole. Remarkably, this second hole bore striking similarities to Mel's original discovery. It had a diameter of approximately nine feet and was surrounded by a metal collar that extended as far as the eye could see. The hole emanated a peculiar warmth, distinct from the surrounding air, and possessed the same sound-canceling properties as Mel's hole. Intrigued by the similarities, Mel and the Native Americans decided to conduct experiments to further investigate the nature of this second hole. They began by lowering a bucket of ice into the depths of the pit, while simultaneously keeping another bucket of ice on the surface as a control. To their astonishment, the ice lowered into the hole did not melt. Instead, it maintained a peculiar lukewarm temperature, even when Mel held it in his hands. Perplexed by this discovery, they attempted to melt the unmelted ice by placing it over a fire. Instead of liquefying, the ice ignited, producing a slow-burning, heat-generating flame. This flame, unlike typical fire, emitted a soft, ethereal light. Mel and the Native Americans watched in amazement as the bucket of ice continued to burn for weeks on end, defying the laws of thermodynamics. Eager to unravel more secrets of the second hole, they decided to conduct a daring experiment. One of the Native Americans volunteered to be lower it into the pit to explore its depths firsthand. However, as they prepared to execute this plan, they encountered a surprising obstacle. A sheep, brought to the hole's edge, exhibited a profound and inexplicable fear, much like the animals near Mel's original hole. The sheep's violent resistance and distressed cries suggested that it sensed an unknown danger lurking within the pit. Undeterred, the Native Americans proceeded with their experiment. They managed to sedate the sheep and lower it into the hole inside a crate. As the crate descended, an unsettling silence enveloped the area. The sheep's struggles ceased, and an eerie stillness prevailed. After a predetermined time, they began to raise the crate back to the surface, anxious to discover what had transpired in the depths below. When the crate emerged, the sheep's lifeless body was revealed. 
Upon examination, they made a startling discovery. The sheep's internal organs had undergone a mysterious transformation. The animal's remains resembled those of a creature that had been cooked from the inside out. Amidst the altered anatomy, an unusual gelatinous substance encased a pulsating embryonic form. Mel and the Native Americans watched in awe as this unidentified life form emerged, connected to the sheep's remains by an umbilical-like cord. The Miraculous Healing and Dime As the mystery of Mel's hole and its Nevada counterpart continued to unfold, a new chapter in Mel Waters' personal story emerged, intertwining his own health struggles with the enigmatic phenomena he had encountered. In a twist of fate, Mel received devastating news in the late summer of 2001. He had been diagnosed with a terminal form of esophageal cancer. Doctors gave him a grim prognosis, estimating that he had only six months to live. Faced with his own mortality, Mel found himself drawn back to the mysteries that had consumed his life. He couldn't shake the feeling that the holes he had discovered held a deeper significance, perhaps even the key to his own salvation. With a sense of urgency, Mel embarked on what he believed might be his final journey to unravel the secrets of the pits. It was during this time that Mel's path crossed with the Native Americans in Nevada once again. They had reached out to him, sensing that his knowledge and experiences could help shed light on the enigmatic hole on their land. Mel, driven by a newfound purpose, accepted their invitation and traveled to the reservation, hoping to find answers that had eluded him thus far. Upon arriving at the site of the second hole, Mel and the Native Americans resumed their investigations, eager to uncover more pieces of the puzzle. It was during one of these explorations that an extraordinary event occurred, an encounter that would forever change the course of Mel's life. As they were conducting experiments near the hole, a strange creature emerged from the depths, much like the one they had witnessed during the sheep incident. This time, however, the creature seemed to possess an intelligence and awareness that defied explanation. It locked eyes with Mel, and in that moment, an inexplicable connection formed between them. To the astonishment of everyone present, the creature approached Mel and communicated with him in a manner that transcended language. It conveyed a message of profound significance, hinting at the true nature of the holes and the forces that governed them. Mel, transfixed by the creature's presence, felt a surge of energy coursing through his body, as if the very essence of life itself was being rekindled within him. In the days that followed, Mel underwent a remarkable transformation. The cancer that had ravaged his body began to recede, defying medical explanation. The once terminal diagnosis vanished, leaving doctors baffled and unable to comprehend the sudden reversal of his condition. Mel, however, knew that his miraculous healing was connected to his encounter with the creature from the hole. As Mel grappled with the implications of his newfound health, another piece of the puzzle emerged. The Native Americans, who had witnessed the incredible events unfold, presented Mel with an artifact they had discovered near the hole, a mysterious 1943 Roosevelt dime. This dime, upon closer examination, possessed properties that challenged conventional understanding. It bore the marking of a mint that had never existed, and its composition defied the standards of the time. The Native Americans believed that the dime was a key to unlocking the secrets of the holes and the forces that governed them. Intrigued by the dime's potential significance, Mel and the Native Americans subjected it to a series of tests. They discovered that the dime exhibited an extraordinary ability to disappear from sight when held at a distance, much like the holes themselves. It also resisted all attempts at digital scanning or photographic capture, adding to its enigmatic nature. As word of Mel's miraculous healing and the mysterious dime spread, it attracted the attention of both believers and skeptics alike. Some saw it as proof of the whole's supernatural properties, while others dismissed it as mere coincidence or fabrication. Mel, however, knew that his experience was real and that it held the key to unlocking a deeper understanding of the world around them the case of the burning ice. As the enigma of Mel's hole and the second hole in Nevada continued to captivate the minds of those who encountered them, a new development emerged that added an even more perplexing layer to the mystery. This development centered around a peculiar substance that came to be known as burning ice, and its effects would soon ripple far beyond the confines of the holes themselves. The story began with a Basque man, a member of a small, isolated ethnic group that had settled in Nevada. This man, 
intrigued by the tales of the burning ice discovered near the second hole, acquired a sample of the substance and brought it back to his cabin. Little did he know that this decision would set in motion a series of events that would challenge our understanding of the natural world. The Basque man, seeking a practical application for the burning ice, decided to use it as a fuel source for his wood stove. At first, the ice seemed to burn steadily, providing a consistent source of heat for his cabin. However, as time passed, he began to notice unusual changes in his surroundings. The air within the cabin became uncomfortably dry, and the man found himself constantly parched, requiring copious amounts of water to quench his unrelenting thirst. The wooden structure of the cabin itself began to deteriorate, with walls and furniture crumbling into fine, powdery dust. It was as if the burning ice was leaching all moisture from the environment, leaving behind a desiccated husk. Alarmed by these developments, the Basque man attempted to remove the burning ice from his stove, but to his shock, he discovered that the stove had somehow merged with the cabin's floor. The intense heat generated by the ice had caused the metal to melt and fuse with the wood, creating a bizarre amalgamation of materials. News of the Basque man's plight soon reached the authorities, and a team of officials and scientists was dispatched to investigate the situation. When they arrived at the cabin, they were greeted by an astonishing sight. The stove had sunk deep into the ground, leaving behind a perfectly cylindrical hole with smooth, glassy walls. The officials, realizing the potential severity of the situation, immediately cordoned off the area and brought in specialized equipment to extract the stove from its subterranean prison. However, even with the most advanced technology at their disposal, the task proved to be incredibly challenging. The burning ice seemed to resist all attempts at removal, clinging tenaciously to the stove and the surrounding earth. As the extraction efforts continued, a sense of unease began to spread among those present. The burning ice, with its ability to consume moisture and reshape matter, seemed to defy the laws of physics. Some began to whisper about the dangers it posed, drawing parallels to the fictional substance known as Ice-9 from Kurt Vonnegut's novel Cat's Cradle, a form of water that could freeze the entire planet. The implications of the burning ice extended far beyond the confines of the Basque man's cabin. If this substance were to spread or fall into the wrong hands, it could potentially wreak havoc on a global scale. The officials and scientists, grappling with the enormity of the situation, began to discuss containment strategies and the need for further research into the nature of this enigmatic material. Meanwhile, Mel Waters, who had been following the developments from afar, couldn't shake the feeling that the burning ice was somehow connected to the holes he had encountered. The similarities in their effects on the environment and their apparent defiance of natural laws seemed too significant to be mere coincidence. The Creature's Communications and Warnings As the mysteries surrounding Mel's hole and the second hole in Nevada continued to deepen, a new development emerged that would shed light on the true nature of the enigmatic creatures that had been encountered. The Native Americans, who had been monitoring the second hole, reported a series of extraordinary events that would forever change the course of the investigation. According to the Native Americans, the creature that had first appeared during the sheep incident had returned, and this time, it had found a way to communicate with them. The creature, they claimed, had been using an old boombox as a conduit for its messages, emitting a series of pulsating tones and vibrations that seemed to carry a hidden meaning. Intrigued by this development, Mel Waters and a team of researchers traveled to the reservation to witness the phenomenon for themselves. When they arrived, they were greeted by an eerie sight. The boombox, placed near the edge of the hole, was emitting a low, thrumming sound that seemed to emanate from the depths of the earth itself. As they listened intently, the tones began to shift and change, forming patterns that defied conventional understanding. The Native Americans, who had been studying the sounds, claimed that they had deciphered a message from the creature, one that carried a dire warning for humanity. According to their interpretation, the creature identified itself as a rock flyer, an ancient being that had existed long before the rise of human civilization. The rock flyers, it seemed, were a race of subterranean entities that had evolved to navigate the complex network of tunnels and caverns that lay beneath the Earth's surface. The creature's message spoke of other worlds, dimensions beyond our own, that were connected to the holes that Mel had discovered. It warned that these worlds were not meant for human exploration, and that any attempt to breach their boundaries could have catastrophic consequences. 
Most alarming of all, the creature spoke of the risks of humanity destroying itself through its own actions. It alluded to the dangers posed by the burning ice and other anomalous materials that had been discovered, warning that their misuse could lead to the annihilation of life on Earth. As Mel and the researchers listened to the creature's warnings, a sense of urgency and trepidation filled the air. The implications of its message were staggering, suggesting that the holes were not merely geological oddities, but gateways to realms beyond human comprehension. The Native Americans, who had long regarded the holes as sacred sites, saw the creature's communications as a validation of their beliefs. They urged Mel and the researchers to heed the warnings and to approach the mysteries of the holes with the utmost caution and respect. Mel, who had been deeply affected by his own experiences with the holes and the creatures that inhabited them, knew that the warnings could not be ignored. He understood that the fate of humanity might very well depend on their ability to unravel the secrets of the holes and to find a way to coexist with the forces that lay beyond them. As word of the creature's communications spread, it attracted the attention of scientists, government agencies, and conspiracy theorists alike. Some saw it as proof of the existence of extraterrestrial life, while others dismissed it as a hoax or a misinterpretation of natural phenomena. 